dear learners today i will take the second part of the unit hypothesis dear learners you see in this part we will first take the section that is when is a hypothesis formulated a hypothesis is formulated after the problem has been stated and previous study has been concluded it is a formulated when the investigation is totally aware of the theoretical and empirical background to the problem the formulation of hypothesis presupposes some problems for which enquiry is necessary if there is no problem no enquiry is needed and there would be no necessity for a hypothesis now the learners you see a satisfactory solution of any problem requires that the irrelevant facts must be eliminated from the relevant facts the formulation of hypothesis gives the direction in which the facts are to be arranged we cannot go forward unless we begin with a suggested explanation of the phenomenon this suggested explanation is called hypothesis now they are learners you take the another section of this part criteria for the formulation of a hypothesis so according to speeds the following criteria are of importance in formulating hypothesis a hypothesis should stand the test be expressed in clear language be in accordance with the general theme of other hypothetic statement in the same field of study and should be regarded as valid be coordinated with the theory of science be a tentative answer to the formulated problem be logical and simplistic consider available investigation techniques be specific and be relevant to the collection of empirical phenomena and not merely conclude a valid judgment the other hypothesis can be formulated in more than one way the others you will take the conditions for a valid hypothesis the most important condition for a valid hypothesis is that it should be empirically verifiable a hypothesis should be compared with the facts of experience directly or indirectly a hypothesis ultimately has to be confirmed or refuted otherwise it will be a bare supposition a hypothesis must provide answers to the problem which initiated enquiry a false hypothesis is not always useless it may encourage further investigation and attempts to find out relations among facts and thereby may increase the evidence for other theories in case we have more than one hypothesis we should prefer the one which has a strong power of predictability and which can explain the consequences if there are two hypotheses on the same problem and if they can be equally confirmed by evidence the simpler hypothesis is generally chosen a hypothesis must be clear definite and certain it should not be vague or ambiguous a valid hypothesis suggests that an explanation which appears reasonably true in the present state of knowledge a fanciful idea or an absurd imagination does not make a valid hypothesis now the learners you will see origin of hypothesis there is no particular method of forming a hypothesis the size of hypothesis depends upon scientist range of knowledge and his native abilities there are however certain aids in the origin of hypothesis they are as follows induction per simple enumeration simple conversion of universal propositions and analogy now you see a simple conversion of universal proposition suggests that the relation between the subject and the predicate may be reciprocal for example the proposition all men are mortal cannot be converted simply we find that the relation between man and mortality is not reciprocal we may investigate the element which make man mortal this suggests the hypothesis concerning mortality of man we find that as men are living beings so men are mortal then we see that a reciprocal relation exists and we arrive that the universal proposition all living beings are mortal 
this proposition all the big big cell model can be converted simply into the proposition or model big cell living beings now dear learners you see the analogy it is another source of hypothesis analogy is based on a perfect resemblance between two things when two things resemble each other in certain important respect we assume that they will probably resemble each other in other aspects too for example if we find that some hill people we come across are very simple we shall suppose that other hill people are also simple because they are inhabitants of hill areas this hypothesis about hill people is based on analogical reasoning they are learners induction per simple enumeration you see a hypothesis may originate from induction per simple enumeration here a large number of instances are observed by the observer and it is found that two phenomena always go together the observer does not find any contrary instance so far as his experience goes however he doesn't know whether there is any causal connection between the two phenomena but the condition that the two phenomena are constantly associated together seems to be sufficient ground for supposing that there is a causal connection between them and thus a hypothesis is framed so it is a general experience that all roses are sweet smelly here we see that all roses irrespective of color and size are sweet smelly and from this observation we form the hypothesis that rose is sweet smelly flower now they are learners you see the section verification and proof of hypothesis so verification of hypothesis means the testing of the truth of hypothesis in the light of facts for verification there must be an agreement between the inference of by the hypothesis and the observer facts the greater the agreement the stronger is the hypothesis direct verification means the direct appeal to the fact of experience to receive full observation or experiment so where a hypothesis cannot be directly verified it should be verified indirectly in indirect verification the consequences deduced from the hypothesis are compared to facts if there is an agreement between consequences and facts a hypothesis is verified if facts agree with the hypothesis and there is no contradictory fact the hypothesis is verified to be true in order to prove a hypothesis it is essential first to verify it however verification is not conclusive proof thus something more is necessary a hypothesis must adequately explain all facts for which it has been made and it must be the only hypothesis to do so it must also explain all related facts and it should have the power of prediction sometimes two or more hypotheses may explain facts then in order to know which one of them provides the real explanation we take a crucial instance this can be found out by observation or by experiment a crucial instance not only confirms a hypothesis but it also negates the other suppose that is that the hypothesis is that x is committed a theft another hypothesis is that y has committed the theft in course of investigation it is found that x was present at a very distant place at the time when the theft was committed however displaying and eliminating its rival hypothesis does not imply that the original hypothesis is proved elimination of its rival hypothesis or verification of a hypothesis only indicates that the original hypothesis is more probable however a crucial instance of seen by experiment has a greater value for the proof of the hypothesis as compared to the crucial instance obtained by simple observation now the learners use take another section that is uses of hypothesis so this is also very very relevant in case of the unit that is hypothesis so for explaining 
some fact or phenomena, hypothesis is a temporary supposition. Hypotheses are not only necessary in science, but in everyday life also. The following are the uses of hypothesis. So hypothesis is the starting point of scientific investigation. The main aim of scientific investigation is to discover the real nature of events. The nature is complex and it presents the events in a complex way. Here, scientific investigation must start with hypothesis regarding the possible nature of events. And hypothesis is the principle by which the real nature of events can be discovered. A hypothesis lies at the bottom of scientific generalization because science must start with some suppositions. Hypotheses make observation and experiment possible. Observation and experiment are known as the material grounds of induction and hypothesis controls them. Both observation and experiment supply the materials of induction which are nothing but some particular facts of experience. Observation tries to find out some unity among those particular facts. Observation must not be random perception, but well-regulated perceptions of particular facts with a definite aim. So it must be guided by a hypothesis to find out the unity among facts. Again, in experiment, we artificially reproduce things or events under known conditions. Such artificial reproduction wants some supposition to be verified for its object. Thus, both observation and experiment are guided and controlled by hypotheses. Now, dear learners, hypothesis is an aid to explanation. Hypothesis explains the facts or phenomena of nature. A fact or phenomenon is scientifically explained when its cause or the law of operation is proved. To search the law of operation or the cause, we have to start with some supposition. In general, Hypothesis assumes three forms, hypothesis concerning an agent or collocation, or the law of operation. In this case, when the hypothesis is probed, the phenomenon is explained. Hypothesis make deduction possible. In some cases, the results of observation are uncertain, and experiment cannot be employed. So in such cases, no causal connection can be proved by direct observation and experiment. In such situation, the only way to carry out scientific investigation is to suppose some principles and deduce consequences from it and compare them with actual facts of experiences. Now, dear learners, now we come to the, the very most, a uh, very important section, that is the latest sama. So in this section, you find some highlighting points. Uh, these points are, you see, observation and experiment are known as material grounds of induction, while the law of causation and the law of uniformity of nature are called the formal grounds of induction. A hypothesis is a tentative supposition, the validity of which has got to be tested. The word hypothesis is a compound of two words, hypo and thesis, and literally hypo means under or below, and the and thesis means a region theory or rational viewpoint. Hypothesis is the pivot of a study around which the investigation resolves, giving meaningful direction to the investigation, particularly with regard to what kind and how much of the time is to be collected. Hypothesis leads to the discovery of laws. It explains facts and laws and thus seeks to verify knowledge. A hypothesis involves four steps, observation, reflection, deduction, and verification. From the point of view of subject matter, hypothesis is a, of three kinds, hi, uh, three kinds, hypothesis concerning agent, hypothesis concerning law, and hypothesis concerning collocation. From the point of view of purpose, hypothesis is of three kinds, explanatory, descriptive, and analogical. In addition to this, some logicians suggest two other kinds of hypothesis. They are ad hoc hypothesis and working hypothesis. A hypothesis may originate from three sources. First one is induction for simple elaboration. 
simple conversion of universal propositions and analogy. Dear learners, the main uses of hypothesis are like hypothesis is the starting point of scientific investigation. Hypothesis make observation and experiment possible. Hypothesis is an aid to explanation. Hypothesis make deduction possible. Now, dear learners, in this section, you find some important books for this unit. The first one you take, uh, you may take, that is Arvind M. Gopi and Carl M. Cohen and Kenneth M. C. Mohan, that is uh, Introduction to Logic. And you take another important book that is Scientific Method and Social Research. It is written by B. and Ghosh. And you also took another very important book that is Logic, Deductive and Inductive, written by Carmen Reed. So these are the very important books you may take. It is also easy for you to understand the unit that is uh, hypothesis if you read the books that is given in the section further readings. Thank you so much, dear learners.